So for everybody out there that wants to be a TV star, okay, uh, what would you, like, what should they do? How should they, like, how do you do that? My main thing I le I've learned from this show is just watching guys like you. You're just, you're walking around and you see money everywhere, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, I don't, what do they see right now? What are they looking at? <laughs> you know? And, and also, like, if it's just in their brain, I don't know how to tell that on TV. I'm not like a magician, you know, I'm a TV producer. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're saying how do you, I the just, camera's got to see what yeah. we see too, yeah. Yeah, so... So tell, tell Glenn, me what Glenn you saw is, Glenn do. Tell me what you saw Glenn do where Glenn saw something and he's like, he sees money but you can't see it. Like, can you give me an example of that? I, I think, um, well, you, you know, you, were, you, you tried to do a whole bunch of things to get to that next, just that next level, right? It was, I think, it felt more of like, you're at 100, how do you get to 500? You're at 500, how do you get to 1,000? And I think that's... Yeah, I think it's, it was more about, in my, my thought in the beginning was, I want to teach Amanda fish, so to speak, right? So I wanted to show the little tiny moves, and, and, um, and then all of a sudden, the clock started ticking in my head going, I'm not going to make it. And then I had to turn it up and not worry so much about, uh, you know, about, because I, I like the idea of showing people just the little baby steps, because in, in the real world, it just, it can't happen that fast, right? And so, I, but you, we had 30 years of experience, right? So we may have been stripped of money and of contacts, but you still have your brain and how to get there. But, but, I, but the real goal for me was for people at home to be able to say, I never thought of that, you know, whatever it is. Build a team, right? That's, yeah, the, yeah, you know, that's yeah. the bigger thing, right? So, but you went hard. Dude, I, I, like, like they, came to me, they came to me one day. I think Angus or Tim Warren called me and said, hey, man, you know, you need to build a team. I'm like, a team. Dude, they ain't no team and win. <laughs> TV moves slow. I mean, it moves slow, much slower than your world. I mean, you know that. I kept telling you, slow down. Just slow down. Yeah, why though? Why? I don't understand why. Like, like you know, me and Glenn, we're gonna. What? You, we, you, and I should do a show together. You know. This is what I really want to happen, and that's what Discovery wants to happen. By the way, huh? This is what Discovery wants more than anything else. Seriously, we could do a cage match. You but know, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't I mean, seem, that's a one-time deal. But we're definitely a lot more alike than different. Oh, one hundred percent. Yet, you know, your style and my style, as far as how it goes, we might get there differently, but we're, there's so much in common in there. But, and that's why I think a lot of people will latch on to the way you like to do it or the way I like to do it, or maybe in your case, Elaine or Monique, yeah. and people, they just enjoy, there's something that's drawn them, you know, and so there's so many different ways to do it, you know. But I would love to maybe have a challenge against you now that... Uh, you know. you know, I did a call, I did a call with Glenn, I did a call with Glenn, like, they, they set up a call and they're like, uh, you can ask Glenn any advice you want. I'm like, why did it take you so long? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, the rest of the show hasn't, your show hasn't aired, and yeah. I mean, it's what you accomplished is un un unbelievable. I don't want to give anything away, but it's, it's, it's starting back up. It's gonna be starting back up soon. It's gonna be starting back up real soon. Yeah. We got a good time so, slot. So thank you, thank you. So, and it was fun doing it with you guys. And, and I know, I, I knew after four or five days, I'm like, these people hate my guts. Everybody on the crew hates me. And I went to, I went to David, the guy with the long lens, and I said, David, I said, how much do they love Glenn? And they're like, everyone loves Glenn. <laughs> we were just talking about that. <laughs> And I knew that meant everyone hates Grant. <laughs> but literally, like, literally, I thought I was so oblivious to the, to the difficulty of it because I told you, I said, I'm going to have, and Nancy, I'm going to have my kids out in three days. And then when I got to Pueblo, I called the lady. And I'm like, don't tell them, but they ain't coming here. That in no way that's going to happen. I thought that was big. But in all reality, they had mad respect for you. They did. They didn't hate you. And you know that. No. Okay. Well, they didn't. Well, I, yeah, uh, <laughs> you, you called Thank me, you. kind lending, you, you called me 
you were there probably day six, and you called me, and you started going through, I, I can't have my family out here. I can't, you know, and he's like, Angus, you didn't tell me about this. No, I didn't. No, Why? Dude, like, because I... Because I told him when I did, I said, look, I'm going to bring my family out. America deserves to see somebody. I had this whole patriotic thing going. This, this completely, this elute fantasy, like I'm having my family out because there's too many families in America that have families at home. It's not fair for me to do this, and I don't have my kids. And then I got to Pueblo. I'm like, ain't no way I'm bringing my kids here. It's funny because, so I'm on one end. They're Zooming me, and they're Zooming you, right? And we Zoomed during the show, and you said that. I'm having my family out here, you know? I mean, you yeah, don't understand, yeah, that's yeah, so important yeah, to me. Yeah. I said, that's great, Grant. And then we cut off the camera and I went, he's not having his family out there. <laughs> <laughs> there's no food, man. There's no food, there's no water, there's no, there's like, there's nothing. There, how, how am I gonna put a nine-year-old in that situation? Do, do you guys ever think about your life and think about what your life would have been if you weren't successful? Like, do you ever think about that? TV guys, you see, TV guys always. No, because <laughs> I, TV guys. That when I watch the show, let's create an arc. When when I watch the show, that's what I see. I see these this parallel world where you're a failure and you're a failure and you have nothing at your age and you're just starting off. And that moment that I saw, that look in your both of your eyes when you get there, you go, "What did I get myself into?" You know. And it's real, right? It feels real. You see, I, mean, I, I think money magnifies who you are. It doesn't make you happier, okay? And it doesn't, you know, it just magnifies the person you are. I mean, when I was in college and I was after sleeping on the floor, I was enjoying my life then, right? When I was dancing on top of the tables in Monte Carlo, enjoying my life then, you know? And so it's just a matter of... Who, you, you know, be comfortable with who you are, and you have inspired so many people to go out and be the best they can be and, and, and live a life so much bigger than they ever dreamed that they could, they, that they could have. And that's um, a wonderful, wonderful gift that you're giving a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.